This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Yes, I am back with a story after kind of a long time. Speaking of time, I've always thought a lot about the passage of time, how very forward it is. I don't really want to go back in time, but I have wanted to stop time just to live in a moment a while longer. Here to live in this moment with me and to listen in on our story that touches on time is my guest, Kayo. Kayo, welcome. So Kayo, I think you're the first worm I've ever had as a guest on the podcast. It is an honor. It's a big honor. Probably the biggest, I would say. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's bigger. Uh, apparently, Kayo was recently given an award, Best Dancer at his daughter's school's PTA disco night. Huh. Wait, Kayo, I think you might be the first dad I've ever had on the show. Yes! It'll be great to have a dad's perspective on this story. So, speaking of dads, and speaking of worms, we do have a story to get to. It features both, by the way. It's called Little Hedgehog and the Time Capsule. Take it away, Jade. Remember, there are no pictures. You're going to have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. Dear Hedgehogs of the Future, You are likely reading this from ergonomic chairs aboard a vessel traveling through space and time. Clearly, you have beamed up this letter from Earth's soil with your advanced technology, of which, as a creature living long ago in a habitat we call a burrow, I can only imagine the broadest of brushstrokes. Dear Hedgehogs of the Future, This letter you are reading, written on my signature stationery, is from the Knights of Yore. To help you understand the hedgehogs of old, I shall tell you about my own life. I was born on a Tuesday, just as the sun fell beneath the hill. A shooting star glimmered across the night sky as I opened my eyes and said my very first word. Yay! Hold on. Let's travel back in time to five minutes earlier to find out what's going on. Five minutes earlier. BB? Yes, little hedgehog. My brain is about to explode in sparkles with the idea I just had. Tell me now, I must hear it immediately. It was a Saturday night. Little Hedgehog and her best friend of all time, BB, were making origami frogs in Little Hedgehog's burrow. We're going to find a very strong box and put lots of things inside that show all the stuff we've been doing in these olden days of ours. Like a few of our best socks, some of our tiaras, and we can each fit in one rain boot. What will we do when it rains? Won't we miss our other... Oh, and we can write letters to the hedgehogs of the future. And then we will put everything inside the box and bury it in the ground. And in a really, 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 really long time, like 11 years from now... Hedgehogs of the future can open the box and learn about the distant past. What you are describing is a time capsule. I learned about it from the encyclopedia my uncle Seymour gave me for Hedgehog Nonfiction Reading Appreciation Day. A time capsule! Yes, that is what we're going to make. Are you ready, BB? Thanks to the survival classes my mom enrolled me in 17 months ago, I am always ready for unexpected events. Last Wednesday, my neighbor, Ms. Dorothea James Hoppinson's pet snail Willis, became trapped under the weight of a fallen log. I employed the use of a lever and pulley system I designed several months back. It took me 37 seconds to free Willis. Okay, Phoebe, so are you ready? Yes. Little Hedgehog and BB found a very strong-looking container in Mr. Hedgehog's closet. It was filled with a bunch of shoes. They emptied it, dragged it to Little Hedgehog's room, and filled it with objects from around the burrow. Now let's write our letters! They got out some paper and went to work. 
We use machines called tractors to plow fields of... Dance parties are very common in this day and age. We listen to something called music that we play with a music player. I will enclose one so that you may hear the sounds of our generation. Little Hedgehog and BB were so caught up in their letter writing, they didn't notice when Little Hedgehog's dad peeked into the room. Is that my tap dancing shoe cabinet? Mr. Hedgehog had recently taken up tap dancing as a stress relieving hobby. Little Hedgehog and BB grinned. Dad, we're using it for something extremely important. Something that could, in theory, change the course of history. Little Hedgehog and BB clapped their teensy paws together and giggled. Just tell me why my tap shoe closet is in here filled with random things from around the burrow. We are are making making a time time capsule, Dad! Dad put a paw to his forehead and sighed. Little Hedgehog, I need my tap shoe closet to keep my shoes from getting moisture in them. You'll have to use a different container. Okay, Understood, Mr. Hedgehog. Dad began to remove the items from his tap shoe cabinet, shaking his head as he went. BB, are you thinking what I'm thinking? That your dad exposes his tap dancing shoes to a great amount of sweat he produces as he dances with great elegance, and he needs to put a dehumidifier inside his tap shoe closet, or its power to keep additional moisture from entering will be negated by its inability to send out the moisture already clinging to the tap shoes? I was thinking that, BB, but also... We simply have not located the container that is destined to serve as our time capsule. That too. You know, Dad said as he pulled a cactus out of his tap shoe cabinet. A well-made time capsule requires thought and effort, not just flights of fancy. (gasps) Flights of fancy? Like on the back of a pegasus? A pegasus is a winged horse, Mr. Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog began twirling around the room pretending to be a winged horse. Nay! The point is, making a time capsule is the kind of project you want to plan out carefully. Nay! Like, with a checklist on a yellow legal pad your grandma got you. Nay! The kind of project you want to do over a holiday weekend with your neighbor, Cecil. The kind... Nay! Hey, wait a second. Can't believe I forgot about that. Memory deteriorates with age, Mr. Hedgehog. I just remembered. I made a time capsule when I was your age. Little Hedgehog and BB attempted to leap into the air with excitement. But they failed because they have very tiny legs that are great for burrowing, twirling, and interpretive dancing, but terrible for jumping. Dad, we have to find it. We must inspect the treasures from your youth, many, many Many, usually many, Dad was not thrilled about such declarations from his tiny daughter and her best friend. Usually, he would try his best to find a way out of whatever they were suggesting. This time, he was in full agreement. Many years ago, Mr. Hedgehog. Ten minutes later, they were on their way. They each brought a shovel. Little Hedgehog's was a tiny, shimmery blue shovel that had come with her Mermaid Explorer's kit. Bebe's was a sensible metal shovel she'd been given as a prize when she completed the wild berry identification segment of her survival course without falling ill. Bebe also brought a compass, canteens filled with water, and twine. Mr. Hedgehog brought a few things with him as well. His own shovel, for obvious reasons, a bright red bow tie, for less obvious reasons, and Cecil, the neighbor who originally helped him put together the time capsule, who still happened to live next door. It took some convincing to get Cecil to come along. Hey, Cecil. Oh, hey, Jermaine. You're still around? This is Jermaine number seven. What are you talking about, Cecil? Jermaine said, his antennae fluttering. Nothing. Jermaine, don't excite yourself. Okay, um, I know it's, uh, been a long time. Haven't seen you in years, now that I think of it. 
I spend most of my time doing my kettlebell exercises and reading historical fiction novels to Jermaine here. My favorites involve dynasties, Jermaine said from his shoulder perch. Uh Uh-huh. Well, uh, Cecil, I know this is ancient history, but do you remember our time capsule that we made? Time capsule? Hmm. Is that a type of medicine? No. That box we put a bunch of stuff in and buried near that big rock? Oh, yes. The history cube. Right, Jermaine? Didn't I mention a history cube to you? You did, yes. I did, yes. History cube. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I'm gonna go find it. I want to show my daughter. I was wondering if you wanted to come. Hmm. We're on chapter three of a very compelling book. Plus, I do need to get up to my kettlebell exercises in, oh, about 37 minutes. But eventually, Mr. Hedgehog convinced them to come by promising hot mushroom cocoa at his burrow afterwards. Cecil brought along just one thing, his pet cricket, Jermaine. He never leaves Cecil's shoulder. They trudged over a grassy hill and across a small bridge above a stream. They heard owls and other creatures of the night calling to one another. As they walked, little Hedgehog and Bibi imagined what they would find inside the time capsule. (gasps) Maybe there will be a worm inside who has survived all this time in the joy of singing alone. And when we open it up, he will sing... Welcome to my underground palace. That's my singing worm voice, BB. Maybe there will be a trophy collection, and one of them will be for Mr. Hedgehog's star turn in the chariot racing event in the ancient Greek Olympics. <gasps> Maybe there will be a real dinosaur tooth that my dad picked up as he walked to school. Finally, they came to a big rock. Mr. Hedgehog and Cecil set down their things. They heard a crow in a nearby tree. The moon bathed everything in a soft glow. Okay, so it's about 17 paces that way. I recall it's about three paces the other way. No, I'm sure it's that way. I think I would remember where we put the tapestry sphere. You mean history cube? I mean, time capsule? Little Hedgehog, Bibi, and Jemaine watched this exchange with both growing amusement and growing concern. They heard a crow again from a nearby tree. I'm sure it's this way, okay? So, Little Hedgehog, Bibi, let's go that way. Mm. Jemaine, let's go. I know our philosophy cylinder is this way. Yes, Cecil. Mr. Hedgehog and Cecil walked in opposite directions and set down their things. Little Hedgehog and Bibi ran to catch up. They heard a crow again from a nearby tree. Mr. Hedgehog, should we be concerned that the only two hedgehogs who have any knowledge of the location of this ancient time capsule cannot even agree on the general direction in which to walk paces in order to find it? No. Little Hedgehog and Beebe looked at each other meaningfully, but said nothing. They heard a crow again from a nearby tree. They saw Cecil begin to claw at the ground as he had not brought a shovel. I shall find you, Anthropology Prism. Mr. Hedgehog, Little Hedgehog, and Beebe took their shovels and began digging. Little Hedgehog's shimmery mermaid shovel was not much help. Mr. Hedgehog and BB dug with great zest. Twenty paces away, Cecil was digging rapidly with just his paws. His daily kettlebell exercises were working wonders. They heard a crow again from a nearby... Oh, no, sorry, I got that wrong. They heard a crow again from just a pace away. Little Hedgehog and BB's eyes went wide as they looked up at the enormous crow. Mr. Hedgehog leaned against his shovel, panting. Excuse me. Um, hi, the crow said. Hello. Hello! Good evening. Yeah, I wasn't gonna get involved, but I guess I am getting involved. Like, usual. I just can't keep my mouth shut when I see animals making fools of themselves. Honestly, it's a burden to be so clever. Mr. Hedgehog peered at the crow. Sorry, what is this about? 
Right. Your time capsule. Bit of a stretch to call it that. More like box full of random things that have no purpose. Dad furrowed his brow. Everyone was silent for a moment. The only sound was the soft thuds of dirt as Cecil and Jermaine disappeared into the deep hole they were digging. How do you know about our time capsule? Dad said. He narrowed his eyes, just as little hedgehogs and Bibi's eyes widened. Are you clairvoyant? Do you have psychic powers? What careers will we have in the year 2045? Will I be an accountant? Will accountants still be a thing? Will I star on Broadway in my own... The crow waved a wing to silence them. Please, stop. Um, I know about it because my neighbor, Ms. Um, Starla Watson von Bogensenberger came about a year ago and dug it up. Yep, she took your stuff. And now it's in her umbrella closet. So I guess you should go home. How do we find her? Oh, hmm. You know what? I can't remember which tree is hers. The crow glanced around dramatically in the darkness. You know what? Actually, I think she moved like 17 weeks ago. Baby, how are we going to find the time capsule? I've come up with 17 ideas. Number one, lie and wait until Starla Watson von Bogensenberger appears. Number two, conduct interviews with all neighbors, including worms, within a 1.7 mile radius. Number three, yell, okay, I can't take this anymore. This is just sad. Uh, I thought you'd give up after you found out it wasn't here, but I guess you're intent on getting it. So, okay, it's me. Okay, I took your time capsule. You are Starla Wasson von Bogensenberger? Dad asked. There is no Starla Bogensen von Watson whatever. I made her up. Didn't that sound like a made-up name to you? Ugh, it's really hard being so much smarter than every other animal. Little Hedgehog, Dad, and Bibi blinked. All right, let's go. I'll bring you to it. You better go get them before they get too deep. The crow said, gesturing in Cecil and Jermaine's direction. They were quite far down the hole at that point. Bibi lowered the end of her twine and pulled them up. You have a house? Dad asked as they stepped into a charming log home. Yes, I designed it myself. And please wipe your paws on the mat. I will not have paw prints sully my floor. The house was alight with candles. The smell of vanilla wafted from somewhere down the hall. Cecil sniffed at the air and scowled. What are we doing here? Where is our mythology trapezoid? Yeah, give it up, added Jermaine. Well, here's the box, the crow said, producing the time capsule from her umbrella closet. Dad, that is a perfect time capsule. That is the best container one could hope for to use as a time capsule, Mr. Hedgehog. <laughs> Thanks. But it was empty. How did you find our time capsule? I don't get it. We didn't even know where to look for it. Where is all our stuff? I'll take your questions one by one, and I'll speak slowly for you. I didn't have to find it. I watched you bury it all those years ago. Watched and wondered, Caca! excuse me, why you would be doing such a weird thing. First, I figured there was something important in the box. Mr. Hedgehog thought back to when they had buried the time capsule. He did vaguely remember hearing a crow in a nearby craw, tree. Craw, Soon craw. as you walked away... I gave a toad some bugs to dig it up for me. I don't like getting my wings dirty. Then I brought it here and opened it, and it was rather disappointing. I trashed most of your stuff. What? How dare you? In my defense, after I saw how useless all your stuff was, I realized you were burying it because it was trash. I thought, oh, they want to make sure they never see any of this stuff again. Anyway, I did keep a few things as decorations. With the sweep of a wing, the crow gestured to her bookshelf. There were plenty of books, mostly large volumes on architectural design and philosophy. But there were other things, too. My suspenders! 
Mr. Hedgehog ran over and grabbed his red suspenders. It was difficult to put them on, given that he was not wearing pants, but he was able to affix them to his prickles. He then pulled out his bright red bow tie he'd brought with him and put that on as well. Dad, a fashion plate over here. Mr. Hedgehog, you look so dapper all of a sudden. These were all the rage back in the day. Right, Cecil? Cecil? But Cecil was distracted. He had found something, too. I can't believe it. I have no recollection of burying these. I've been looking for them on the third Friday of each month for the last seven years. Right, Jermaine? Cecil held up a pair of bright yellow knee socks with little smiley faces printed all over them. Right, Cecil. I don't even know why I'm asking, but why were you looking for the knee socks on the third Friday of every month for the last seven years? Dad asked. I take a break from my kettlebell exercises on the third Friday of each month. Gives my legs a bit of rest. But when I'm not exerting my legs, they get terribly cold. And I think to myself, where did I put my cheerful yellow knee socks? Did you ever consider, after looking for them so many times, that perhaps they were gone forever and you should go out and buy... (coughs) Excuse me, I forgot about the worm. Let me go get him. Little Hedgehog and BB looked at each other and grinned, their eyes going wide with excitement. The crow came back into the room, carrying a worm in her wing. This little guy somehow made it in there. Would have thrown him in a stew or something, of course, but I'm allergic. He's been living here ever since. (gasps) Does he sing joyfully? Is he at any moment about to burst into song? I do not sing the worm said. I share my poetry. Before anyone could comment, the worm continued. I call this one History Cube. I wrote it the day you hedgehogs buried me. Cecil elbowed Mr. Hedgehog. See, it's called a History Cube. The darkness was absolute. Night surrounded. Paul's steps receded, becoming whispers. The whispers went silent. My hopes went silent. The world was silent. Okay, okay. Then I dug up the box and found you, the crow said, cutting in. I've heard this poem like 4,000 times. You can take him with you. The crow shoved the worm into Bibi's paws. She and Little Hedgehog grinned. Bibi are you thinking what I'm thinking? That we should use your dad's time capsule to serve as our time capsule because it is the perfect size, shape, strength, and it is also stylish in a retro way. <gasps> yes, but also... Oh, wait, no, just yes. That's what I was thinking. Yay. Yay. Suddenly, they heard what sounded like dozens of crows descending on the house. Oh, forgot about my book club. It's at 3 a.m. Oh, and it's 2.58. Crows are very punctual creatures. Hurry along now. They don't like it when book discussions are delayed. Mr. Hedgehog and Cecil swiped a few more of their things from the crow's bookshelf. Little Hedgehog and BB carried out the worm and the empty time capsule. The book club members had landed in the yard and stared at them with beady eyes as they walked towards home. Each crow had a hard-backed book tucked beneath its wing. On the way home, Mr. Hedgehog sidled up to his tiny daughter. Little Hedgehog? Yes, Dad? I'm sorry I was hard on you before about what you wanted to put in your time capsule. I guess time has dulled my memory of what I put into my own. And it couldn't have been that impressive if that crow thought it was a bunch of trash. It's okay, Dad. Also, I think your bow tie and suspenders look as very cool. BB appeared out of the shadows. You do you, Mr. Hedgehog. Thanks, BB. Back at Little Hedgehog's burrow, they all had mushroom cocoa. The worm entertained them with some poetry. My hopes grew like a flame. My excitement grew like a flame. The world grew then. Little Hedgehog and Bibi finished their letters to future hedgehogs. Basket weaving, glass blowing, knitting shawls from available grasses. 
And, oh, my other weekend activity is writing speeches for local officials. And finally, step number 28. Dance your heart out. That's it. You now know how to start your very own 2020-style impromptu dance party. Later, they buried their time capsule right outside the burrow under a large sycamore tree. Bibi made a very detailed map, just to be sure. They all scanned the area several times to make sure there was no one else around, lying in wait to dig up their box of treasures from the future days of yore. They included drawings of their homes, photos of their families, some magical pixie dust they made out of sand and food coloring, and Little Hedgehog's most recent collection, 27 Pegasus Feathers. Okay, so they were pigeon feathers. The hedgehogs of the future wouldn't know the difference. Cecil kindly offered to dig the hole. No shovels required. Of course I'll help with your psychology pyramid. He's been training for this his whole life, Dad remarked as Cecil began scraping dirt in all directions. The worm broke tradition and agreed to sing joyfully, as Little Hedgehog had requested. La, la, la. This is me singing like Afterwards, they all went to sleep to the sound of crows in the distance, leaving a very energizing book club meeting. Okay, Kyle, what did you think of the story? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. Kayo said the story was decent, and he was not pleased with the worm's poetry. He believes worms are, in fact, very skilled poets on the whole. Interesting. As they are both very grounded in a literal sense, but they also don't do a whole lot, so they have a lot of time to simply think about life. Okay. I mean, it sounds like they do things like go to PTA disco nights. Just quoting you. Kayo says that was just one night out of the whole month. Look, next time I feature a worm who recites poetry, I will make it better poetry. Okay, are we good? Okay. Thanks for coming, Kayo. Oh, really? Hmm. Kayo says, as a dad... He really appreciates Mr. Hedgehog. Don't we all? Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. Peter K. runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Special thanks to Jade for providing this super important reminder message at the beginning. And big thanks to the many, many listeners who provided sound effects used in this story. Thank you to Noah, Ailey, Pippa, Serafina, Majui, Uyara, Lily, Leon, Ruby, Olivia, Hugo, Abby, Nuri, Clara, Theodora, Ada, and Edison. For this story, I put out a special request to those subscribed to my email list asking for crow sounds and Wow, I got an amazing response. So make sure you're signed up for my email list. You can find it at my website so you don't miss those types of special requests from me. You can also follow me on social media where I give updates on what I'm up to, my progress on the stories. I give some behind the mic details and sometimes I share listener art and stories and episode illustrations. And thank you all, as always, for listening in. <laughs>